Chelsea fans, I don't normally post negative videos. I don't normally whinge. I don't normally criticise. I try to be as positive as possible. But what we've seen on this weekend against Everton, what we've seen in the last four games, and what we've seen over time with Thomas Tuchel, only in moments in certain games, not over the course of everything because Tuchel has been great for Chelsea, but we have to be realistic. We have to look at the situation and we have to understand that Chelsea, Tuchel have been absolute crap. And it's time to talk about it. I have to talk about it on my channel. There's no point me being positive and you know praising people when they don't deserve to be praised. And this whole situation about where we were a few months ago, we, were, we had third place pretty much done and dusted and sealed for some reason. I don't understand why. For some reason now, we've... We've got ourselves in a situation where Arsenal, Arsenal of all people, are three points behind us. And that's just an absolute joke. It's a joke. We've got ourselves to blame, only ourselves to blame. And when we blame ourselves, I'm talking about the manager and the players. Now, let me get start with the players first and foremost. To me, it seems as though half these players are either gone, their head's gone from Chelsea, or... They're just focused on the FA Cup final, and that's it. They're not playing as they should be. They're not as focused as they should be. And it's doing my head in. Andreas Christensen, don't play him anymore. Simple as that. He's obviously, his head's gone. He's gone to Barcelona. You know, he's made mistakes in the past, but overall, under Thomas Tuchel, he's been, not imperious, but he's been great. He's been solid. He's been comfortable. All this talk about a move away to Barcelona and a potential move being done... And what happens? You see mistakes from him. You see the back pass the other day against the Arsenal, which killed us. Just not focused, not concentrating. Cesar Azpilicueta, I love the man. He's been a great servant for Chelsea. And over the average of the time that he's been at Chelsea, his performances have been seven or eight. He's been absolutely solid. He's been one of the most consistent performers for Chelsea, but he's making mistakes. He's making mistakes because maybe... The situation with, with reports saying that Chelsea have extended his contract because he played 30 games this season. He gets an automatic extension. There's rumours that he wants to go back to Spain and he's trying to negotiate with Chelsea to release him from that extra year. Is that playing on his mind? The mistakes he's making is not like him. The Arsenal game. The game against Everton. You know, these mistakes that are being made, I just don't understand it. Then you look at Tony Rudiger. Now, i got to say this about Tony Rudiger, and I've been saying it on my channel for ages. I'm not bothered about the fact he's going. Yes, he's been great under Thomas Tuchel. He's been solid enough and probably one of the best defensive performers on the left side of that back three. Put him in a back two, you can't play him. Lampard was playing with a back two, didn't play Rudiger for a reason. Rudiger is rash. Rudiger wants to get involved in whenever there's a ruck on a pitch. He makes ridiculous challenges when he shouldn't. He just needs to stand up and use his experience. And I'm talking about the Everton game. First half, he puts himself under immense pressure by taking out Seamus Coleman right out on the byline when, as a kid, you are told, when you're being trained football, when you're learning the game, you are told that when somebody's out wide, they're going nowhere. Just stand up and make them play the ball around you. Don't dive in. What does he do? Dive in and gets himself booked and puts him under himself under pressure straight away. Stupid decision, reckless tackle, but he's got it in him. And he's gone, his head's gone. And I just want to say about Rudiger, the greed that we're reading about is ridiculous. I understand he's been on crap wages at Chelsea, I understand that. But this talk of a sign-on fee for him and a sign-on fee for his brother, who's his agent, is scandalous. The amount of money he's going to go and sign at Real Madrid is scandalous. Real Madrid are skin. They've got no money. They're borrowing off the Bank of Spain and they're funding their transfers. And that needs to be looked into realistically as far as FFP goes. But they're skin, but they're now going to pay him over £300,000 a week. Good luck to the bloke. But I'm not going to miss him. <clears throat> I think that, that we've got other options that we've obviously looking at. And I think that, you know, players come and go. Simple. Rudiger didn't want to stay. He wanted Chelsea to offer him a contract. Chelsea offered him a lot of money. He turned it down. He wanted much more than that. He's got what he wants. Let him go now.
Bye bye, Rudiger. But for the time being, until the end of the season, focus, concentrate, use your bloody experience, and don't go diving in stupid tackles, reckless tackles, and don't get involved in fights. I could go on about other players. Ngolo Conte's made mistakes of late. Hesitation in the Real Madrid game that cost us the, one of the goals. Their, their equaliser or the winning goal from Benzema, whatever it was. You know, he's made mistakes again. He hesitated against Man United. But it's not just individual players. It's a collective. And how have we gone from being a football team that is defensively solid into just leaking goals for fun? And I just have to say that the the whole situation with the the team, the way we're playing, the poor performances, the results, it comes down to the manager. Now, Thomas Tuchel has been absolutely outstanding for Chelsea and he will continue to be. But there is doubts in games that I've seen where he refuses point blank to make changes when it's obvious what the change should be. Now, Everton game. He was asked after the game, why didn't bring on Romelu Lukaku? And he said... Because Jorginho got injured and he's only got three subs. The situation in that Everton game was that Kai Havertz got too involved with Yeri Mina, who, by the way, is a joke of a defender who dives around everywhere like he's been punched while he's just been tapped. He's a dirty get as well. He pinches. He, you know, Jordan Pickford, he's holding him on the floor not to get him up. He's just an absolute joke of a defender, Mina. Anyway, Havertz got involved with him. And by keeping doing it and keep shoving each other off the ball and pinching each other off the ball, Havertz's head was gone. He was too focused on the meaner thing. It's a natural thing. You've got a bit of beef with somebody that's ongoing in a game. Every time you go near him, you don't think about the game. You're thinking about that player and giving him a dig or whatever you want to do. At that point, Tuchel needed to grab hold of Havertz and say, sort yourself out for the second half. If you don't, you're being changed. He didn't. The beef with Mina continued. Take him off and bring Lukaku on. I know Lukaku's been useless for Chelsea so far, to a point. I know that he doesn't offer us what we're looking for. We want to play up to a big target man to bully defenders and bring other people into the game. That's not Lukaku's game, as we all know. He wants to be more like a mobile Timo Werner than he would a Drogba Costa or Giroud type of player, which baffles me. And he can't win the ball in the air when he's being challenged by a defender. Anyway... Lukaku would have given us something different up front. He could have gone up against Mina. Give Mina something more to think about. Something different to think about. But Tuchel never did it. Thomas Tuchel in games has made strange substitutions in games, I have to say. Let's go like for like. The Everton game, switch up the formation. Go two up front. Go four at the back. Switch it up. Take Aspi off. Reese James back at right back. Bring on Ziyech on the right hand side. You've got Alonso on the left there. You could have changed him for Pudisic and then gone... Lukaku for Havertz as the three changes. Yes, Jorginho had a bit of a knock, but we have to wait and see if that was true. Anyway, I mean, different games this season and last season. Chelsea have had the opportunity to take advantage of the teams around us in the top four race. And time and time and time again, we don't do it. We let the chances go. We drop points. We draw games. We lose games we should never be losing. And you have to question why that's happening. Is it bad eggs in the dressing room? Is it people that heads are just gone because they want to go elsewhere? Is it the uncertainty of the ownership of the football club? I don't care. You're being paid an absolute fortune, more than I'm ever going to see in my lifetime, to go out on that football pitch and perform for 90 minutes, to train for two hours a week every single day. I'll jump through bloody hoops to earn half of what you earn in a week. It's just ridiculous. It's even a quarter of what they earn. It's an absolute joke of what they earn. And they need to go out there and now show pride in the last few games of the season to make sure we nail third place. Because if we lose out, if we scrape the top four like we did last year, it's a travesty. If we, if we don't even finish top four, it's an absolute joke. And the players will be called to answer and Tuchel. If Abramovich is still sitting there, he'll be called in Tuchel and asked for an explanation as to what's happening. He'll be probably told in no uncertain terms, you've got to sort this out. And he would already gone to the training ground and spoke to the players. I guarantee you that. This whole situation is just an absolute shambles. It's a shambles. And just into my head while I'm thinking about it, another example of Tuchel, he doesn't change things up when he should, when we can all see it. Juventus away, Champions League this season, when we end up losing 1-0. Havertz was playing up with Lukaku. 
Now, it was a game where Lukaku was being asked to push right up against Bonucci and De Ligt at the back and play up there with Havertz floating around him. Now, for Bonucci and De Ligt, it was easy. Lukaku just sits in front and moves side to side. He's easy to see, easy to mark. And what happened as a result? Juve pushed up their defensive line. They squeezed the play and made it compact. And there was no space to play in. At that point, on my commentary on my channel, if you go back and watch it, I was saying at half-time, change it up, bring on Timo Werner, take Lukaku off and instruct every single Chelsea player for the next 10 minutes in the second half, as soon as you get that ball, over the top to Werner. It gives Bonucci and De Ligt a different problem to think about. Rather than seeing someone here in front of them moving around from side to side, they've got to deal with somebody running in behind them, running around them and pace. And if anything, what would have happened was the defensive line would be hesitant or they'd try and compensate for it and they move backwards, and that's where the space opens up, and that's where the game changes. Against Everton at the weekend, Lukaku should have come on against Mina and take Havertz off. He'd lost his head. It didn't happen. As a result, we got nowhere. Against Man United, how on earth we couldn't finish is beyond me. Kai Havertz, culprit. He's been great for Chelsea, don't get me wrong. He's been outstanding. In that game, woeful. Hit straight at De Gea. Headed straight at De Gea. Had a chance to square the ball when he was out wide by the six-yard box and had a shot into the side net in near post. Not far post, near post. Should have squared it. Didn't do it. It's it's almost as if these players now, we've been calling for weeks for Mount Havertz and Werner to play up front. They've got their, their positions cemented, it seems, for the last month or so. And they're just... Because they probably know they're going to be selected. Change it up a bit now. You have to. I know it's a different Chelsea team without those three up front, but at the minute, it's not working. So, I just wanted to get this off my chest because it's been bugging the life out of me. And hopefully what I'm saying is making sense to you guys as well and you feel the same way. Because right now it's shit. Right now we've got ourselves from being comfortable, third place, nailed on to the Arsenal three points behind, breathing down our necks. And the players need to wake up. I do not care if you're leaving in the summer. I do not care if you've got a thought in your head about leaving the summer. I don't give a shit. Get out on that pitch, represent the badge and play for the club that employs you currently and do a job. Because if you don't do a job, you shouldn't be playing. Simple as that. So, Tuchel, love you for what you've done for our football club and I will continue because you have been outstanding. But you have to acknowledge you've got it wrong time and time again of late. And you need to make changes, make the right selections, make the right substitutions, change the formation when we need to, to mix things up a bit. Don't just play games out like you did against Everton. That's it from me. Hopefully you guys agree with me. If you do, post your comments in the comments section. I'll see you next time.